introduce myself to you. Um, this is uh, me at age six, having given myself probably the best haircut of my life um, in, I think, a neighbor's backyard. I'm not really sure. Um, things have gotten slightly better since then. Um, so these are three kind of pivotal moments of my life. Um, the, the top left is in New Orleans um, in 2006 with five students having uh, all of us just gotten mohawks uh, to raise money for New Orleans relief, having been working with, uh, with uh, a, a nonprofit down there that was reconstructing after uh, the Hurricane Katrina. Um, the uh, top right, obviously, is me and my lovely wife, Erin, um, on our wedding day. And then the last one is me uh, hiking the Camino de Santiago in Spain. Um, which was, a, uh, all three of these were transformative experiences in, in different ways. And um, I really do believe that what we do kind of makes who we are. Um, and this is a more comprehensive uh, <laughs> idea or, or sense of who I am, where I've been, and, and what I've done with myself. Um, so yeah, that disaster haircut uh, is a long time ago. Um, you know, I've moved around a lot. I've had a lot of different careers. Um, the, the bottom road does not encompass everything I've done. Um, within that, I've also uh, trained as an EMT. I've worked at the state, Vermont State Mental Hospital um, in a closed door psychiatric facility. Um, I've worked with Tony to send students abroad uh, on the Navajo reservation. Um, and lots and lots of different things. So, um, but here I am now at Kate's. And I want to talk a little bit about what we do at Kate's. So Kate's, um, this is sort of the, 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 the John Mark Shaw view, the 30,000 foot view of what we do. Um, and it's really anything that you can imagine that a, a student needs from, uh, the tagline is from cradle to career. Um, and uh, anything a young person needs that has anything to do with school or academics or kind of how they become who they want to be. That's what we will do with them. But I want to focus in on um, some horrible statistics um, that over the last two years, these are the changes. And this is why people are freaking out about college and college admissions. Um, because this is what's going on. In two years, uh, Columbia went up, the, the number of applications went up 50%. Okay? Williams College in Massachusetts, 75%. Now, it's not just happening at the, at the ultra elite schools. It's also happening at the next tier down, and then the next tier down, and the next tier down. Now, I don't do this in order to scare anybody. I'm doing this to be a sort of a reality check. And the knock-on effect of this is that, in fact, admission rates are going down. And the reason they're going down, unlike the rest of us who, if, if we're running a business, and we have more and more customers knocking on our doors, well, you'd think that they would be building more and more dorms, but they're not. Um, they're not growing at the same pace, and so their selectivity is growing. Another way of thinking about it is these are highly rejective institutions. Okay? Um, and so the, uh, the, the college admissions game is just becoming more and more competitive. Now, that doesn't have to matter to everybody. There are some very, very good schools that are not among this tier of schools. And so if you, if you have a, a child or you know a child who's just not there, please do not pressure them. Do not force them into that box. We have a lot of families who really, it's all about prestige for them. And that is a horrible reason to get a kid into a college, okay? Um, what we wanna do is we wanna find the right fit for the right person. And for a lot of folks, especially those who are interested in uh, correlating their, um, their happiness or their income with the institution that they go to for college because there are correlations there, um, we can help with that. So um, again, same thing at, at uh, I mean, Northeastern, when I was going through high school, if you had a pulse and could string together a sentence, Northeastern would let you in. Um, not because it wasn't a good school. It was an amazing school always. They've got this incredible co-op education program there. Um, but people have woken up, and now it's become one of the most challenging schools in the country to get into. So um, great. Uh, now what do we do about this? Um, so um, here I'm going to give you sort of two pretty simple things and a few more complicated things. Um, 
Look, test optional. There's this, a movement on that I fully support that not everybody should have to take the SAT or the ACT. People learn differently. They demonstrate their knowledge differently. That's really important. But when colleges tell you that they are test optional, if you are serious about getting into those colleges, the ones that are at least the, the ones that are releasing their data, they are showing us that if you're serious about going to that college, you really got to show them scores at or above their median. Okay, so if you have a student who's telling you like, I want to go to you know whatever school and it's a name brand school, get them serious about the SAT or the ACT. Um, so the next thing that the sort of uh, number two thing is applying early. This is, again, it's an optional thing that's really not optional. Early decision means that you are applying to that one school and that you are committing to that school. And because colleges are ranked in part based on the number of students who they accept who then matriculate to that institution, they are ranked by that in US News and World Report, that it's really important to them that it, they know that if they let you in, you're gonna come to them, okay? And so the best way of indicating to, that, to them that that's the case is this early decision. And you can see it triples or doubles, or in, in Dartmouth's case, like that, four, five, four times your chances, multiplies your chances of getting into these schools by four times, okay? Now what that means is you've gotta apply early and that means you've gotta shift the whole application process early. Um, so again, same thing, um, you're going to improve your chances if you apply early. But again, a lot of the college, um, college uh, counselors at schools, through absolutely no fault of their own, uh, are completely overworked. They do not have the time. The, the nationwide ratio is 350 students to one counselor. That is insane. You cannot get to know 350 kids a year. Okay. Um, so we offer a more personalized approach. So that's, those are the sort of the easy things. Here are the more difficult things. Um, colleges in the US, unlike colleges essentially everywhere else in the world, they are looking for floating brains. Okay? The US wants to know who you are, what you care about, who you want to be, and how you want to save the world. Okay? And they are building a class based on that. They are not just looking for the same kind of person. They are looking for diversity in all kinds of ways. Diversity of skill, interest, uh, religious, social, um, everything you can imagine. They, they have slots for violin players in some places or cello players or wherever, not just at music schools. So it's really important to know who you are competing against at these different schools. And that is gonna take a lot of research. And so if you have the time to do that research early, then you can apply early and maximize your chances of getting in. Um, so again, the save the world thing, you know, we've all been watching what's going on. Some of us have been watching what's going on on college campuses. A lot of that is a function of the, the, the administration, the professors pushing kids to make change in the world. And this is sort of a foreseeable event, right? So um, we're, we're seeing kids take that into their own hands. Whether you think that it's right or wrong, that's the knock-on effect. Like, okay, you're telling us to go change the world, let's go change the world, we're gonna start on our college campus, right? Whether or not you agree on the change that they're trying to make. So the important thing is that you understand that these colleges are your, are your kids' customers that you, they are, you are trying to sell your kid as a product to the college, and this is a branding exercise. And the problem is that not all of the colleges want the same product. They're all looking for slightly different things. If you are applying to Georgetown, University of Chicago, and Brown, you are making a huge mistake because you do not want to be the, the same person to those same schools. You won't get in, okay? And so um, that's really kind of what I wanted to cover, except there's this new thing, AI. It's not really AI. It's what's called a large language model. Bill knows a lot more about it than I do. Um, but this is the very first college admissions cycle where uh, LLMs or AI has been used. Um, and uh, it's hard to imagine, but ChatGPT is only like a year and a half old, right? 
Um, within their first five days, they had 1.5 million users, which is amazing. And people are using it all wrong. And the, the problem is, from, from our perspective, is that, yeah, you can use these things to help you finish the essay. You cannot use them to help sell yourself as an individual because what LLMs do is they sort of take an average and, and, and kind of make you average. You do not want to be average in the college process. Okay? So you have to stand out. And if you want to use something like this to begin with, great. Then you have, you've got to do a lot of editing. Okay? So if you know a young person who doesn't maybe want to work with Kate's, but they want to use that, just make sure that they are editing it, especially because um, there's a great piece from September 1st in the New York Times last September about a, 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 the tech writer at the Times was writing about how to use these LLMs, AIs, uh, to write a college essay. And um, because they are truth agnostic, the essays that it would spit out, you know, oh, I want to apply to Dartmouth, or I want to, go to come to Dartmouth and study neurology, uh, neuroscience or whatever, and here's the professor that I want to work with. They do amazing work, et cetera, et cetera. That professor has never worked at Dartmouth, right? Because the, the AIs do not have any way of, yet of, of figuring out what, what truth is in the way that we understand truth. And, and so it's going to be completely inaccurate. <laughs> and so in that way, they're not unlike high school students who are maybe not so meticulous about their facts, right? Um, but uh, so please, if you know a student who's using these LLMs or these AIs to do their essay writing, um, please uh, warn them. OK, so I've got a, a few other slides, but I want to stop here for Q&A if there is Q&A. Yeah, more. Sorry to be behind the times. A large language model. It's, it's what you're thinking of when you say AI. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Chris and then David. Um, so what are the colleges look? My daughter is working on that. She visited me in London to look at some schools. She's not doing the SAT scores. What are they looking at? Does she need to do a pitch deck and put that together and send it to them as a? It's going to depend on the school. She wants to do creative writing for movies and TV. OK, so she's looking at like USC or? <laughs> okay, look, let, we need to have a longer conversation. <laughs> um, let's, let's talk about it because it's gonna, it really is. Um, University of Michigan, what are they looking for? Everyone's looking for there is no different. one thing. There's That's no the one. thing, is they're looking for very different stuff. Right. David. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, some of it is that. The, the universities want to appear to be as selective as possible because, that again, that boosts their ratings. So they want as many applicants as possible. Another factor is um, the test optional movement. That a lot of students were selecting out because they knew, like, oh, God, I'm never going to be able to get into Harvard because I don't have the test scores. I have the grades, but not the scores. And so they were self-selecting out. And so that that uh, boosted it tremendously. Another thing, which is, I, again, super positive, is the colleges, when I was going to high school, um, Harvard was recruiting a massive percentage from a very small number of schools, right? These elite prep schools in the Northeast, Andover, Exeter, et cetera. And they have widely diversified where they are getting their applicants, which is fantastic. But what it does mean is all of those applicants are, are going into these bigger pools. So it's a, it, it, there's a lot of stuff to it. But yes, marketing, savvy marketing is, is part of it. One, two, three. Yep. When do you generally like to start working with a child? Like what is it? If, if I had my druthers, I would start working with them in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I was talking with a member yesterday, um, chatting with a member yesterday. Um, this, sh the, the ramp, the on-ramp to the college process should not look like this. It should look like this. And the more time you give it, the more thoughtful you and your student can be. And that is what encourages growth. And that's what we're about. We have, look, the getting into college is the end of the process. The real process is, is what we ask, three questions that we ask every time. Who do you want to be? What impact do you want to have on the world? And what do you want your life to be like? And no, no, no. And here's the thing. You, we don't, it, that, the answers are going to change, right? But what we want, what we want is to make that journey intentional rather than accidental.
right? So you tell me you want to be a neuroscientist and you're in ninth grade, great. Let's get you to Muhlenberg for the summer, for a summer, prog uh, summer um, camp that focuses on neuroscience. Then, hey, you find out, oh my god, I hate neuroscience. Fantastic, I just saved you $250,000 right. and four miserable years, right? And then we pivot, no, now maybe now I wanna be a lawyer. Oh my God, no, I don't think you do. But, you know, <laughs> all, all this stuff, right? No. So, uh, um, uh, so all, we're all about this sort of weaving process. If you're going in a straight line, you're gonna hit a brick wall. What are those two questions again? Who do you wanna be, two minutes? No, two more. Oh, two more questions. Uh, who do you wanna be? What do you want your life to be like? and how do you want to change the world? Okay, uh, Susan, and then we had one back there. Yeah, Bill. Yep. Uh, this is similar and follow up to the question about the number of applicants. Yep. On average, are students applying to many more schools? Yes, to, absolutely. Is that in the is interest of their brand management, are they applying to too many? Um, the problem is, that one of the problems is, yes, first of all, yes. Uh, when I was in school, the average was five. Now, with the students that we're working with, the average is about 20. Um, so again, that magnifies the number of colleges. The, one of the problems is there is no such thing as a safety school anymore. Because the colleges have wised up, and they, because they only want to let in kids who are going to come to them, if they think that you are too qualified, you run the risk of not getting in. So it's an incredibly, anybody who knows game theory, like this is game theory, right? Um, okay, Bill, yeah, last one. You mentioned that it would be a mistake to submit the same application to U Chicago, Brown, yep. and yep. Georgetown. I'm wondering if you can unpack that a little bit. How, how do you know? Is there some tribal knowledge that Cates have where you know that Brown likes applications yes. like this or <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so we've been working with folks, Chris uh, Jamie and the founder has been working with folks on this for 20 years. And with that knowledge, and I've been, I've been working with students for about the same amount of time, um, and we know what schools are looking for what students just based on historical knowledge. And also, we meet with, with admissions reps and they tell us what we're looking for. Oh yeah, I just bumped into somebody from London. Here's this kid, we're gonna admit this kid. We know we're gonna admit this kid. If you've got another kid who's like this from London, do not send them to us. Oh. Because geographic diversity is super important for them. They are not gonna take two of the same kids from the same school, from the same place, okay? So anyway, um, thank you for your attention. I really appreciate it. Please come talk to me if you need to.